make yourself at home. Good morning, Kiora, or good evening. Uh, for those of you that are um, on that timeline, my name is Scott Matheson. I'm the co-founder of Working in New Zealand. And uh, this webinar is from Auckland, New Zealand, 9 a.m. in the morning here. And it's all about uh, professionals in the engineering and construction space who are interested in moving to New Zealand in this um, really opportune time. So we've got some fantastic panelists. This is only a 30-minute webinar. We're going to keep it um, short and sweet, but packed of information uh, so that you can realize your dream of moving to this amazing country. Um, my panelists today, I'll start in the UK with Paul Goddard, who's been in the industry for well over 20 years now. Paul, if you could just introduce yourself, please. Yeah, my name's Paul Goddard. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to be typing answers in the chat room for you. Um, I see you all in there asking questions, so type away and ask questions. I'm a fully licensed immigration advisor. I've been doing it for a long time time and I moved back I moved to New Zealand in 2003 with my family um, spent 18 amazing years there I'm at the moment based in the UK uh, obviously I can hop back to New Zealand whenever I want which is awesome and um, great to see you on here fantastic thank you Paul um, our specialist in New Zealand in the infrastructure space and from a recruitment perspective um, Hilary Bonham who's been with working in for well over 15 years uh, Hilary, if you could introduce yourself, please. Sure. Thanks, Scott. And hi, everybody. Um, and my name's Hilary. And yes, I'm the International Recruitment Manager for Infrastructure and Trades at Working In. Uh, so I'm based in Auckland. So hopefully you guys have all done your homework and know that Auckland is our largest city. Um, so as Scott mentioned, I've actually been at Working In for a very long time. So I love getting the opportunity to help people like you through their journey of moving to New Zealand. Um, as you saw from the short video earlier, it's definitely an amazing country. Um, I know that the outdoors and the work-life balance culture here is a super draw card for you guys. Um, it's definitely a thing. Uh, the lifestyle is truly exceptional. Um, being a super small country, everything's easily accessible. So the mountains, the beaches. So depending on what you guys like to do, there's definitely a lot on offer. Um, so along with that, um, we've also got some awesome employment opportunities that we'll discuss with you later on in the webinar. Thank you, Hilary. And our um, New Zealand-based licensed immigration advisor, Hamni Jaggi, if you could introduce yourself as well. Thank you, Scott. Um, hi, everyone. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, my name is Hamni Jaggi. I'm a full licensed immigration advisor. I have been practicing my license since 2015, but I have been working in this industry for close to 10 years. I'll be completing my 10 years mark this year. Uh, it's a great news. I, have, um, I came to New Zealand as a migrant myself on a student visa. So I know what it you know, takes to come here and settle down here in this beautiful country that you will absolutely enjoy if you decide to settle down here. Uh, in this webinar, we all will try and give you as much as information from the direct source because uh, me and Paul are full licensed immigration advisors. So you will have the correct information um, and from the right source, which is very important. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you, Hamni. Um, the point that Hamnit makes about using a licensed immigration advisor in your journey is that um, in New Zealand, the immigration um, industry is uh, regulated by our government and licensed immigration advisors obtain their licenses through the government and are monitored and renewed on an annual basis. So it gives you protection in all facets of your move. And I think it's really important, no matter what you do, that uh, using a licensed immigration or immigration lawyer um, in this move gives you protection um, in so many different ways. So uh, let's go into the agenda and we'll just tell you what we're going to be covering off today. Um, we've introduced myself. My name is Scott Matheson. Um, if I didn't say that before, we've been running, working in for over 20 years, helping thousands of people move to New Zealand and Australia. Um, it's something that we just love doing. We don't stop enjoying it, um, but also we kind of know what what, uh, what the process is now. And we have in that time gotten to know and worked with um, thousands of employers throughout New Zealand. So we have an incredibly large network to help you find that job, which is really important um, when you're looking for that visa. So we'll cover off the current situation in New Zealand in terms of COVID because we are in a sort of a semi-lockdown situation at the moment. Uh, Hamney will talk about the immigration and the visas, you know, how do we do this? Um, 
area will cover off, hey, what's going on in construction now? What are the demands? Because the demands are extreme. And then we'll look at the catch-22, because how do you actually get a visa without a, um, you know, because you need a job offer. And how do you get a job offer if you're offshore? It's all about the preparation. It's not about doing it now. It's all about preparing first. Paul will go into that, okay? And that's that whole preparation for the job market that Hillary will touch on as well. Then we'll look at the border openings and the exemptions. We might tie that in with some of that immigration stuff because we do have a five-stage plan to open the borders, which is fantastic news, which means we'll be able to start welcoming people from about July onwards. Um, but the preparation starts now. And then it's, what, it's the next steps. The next steps and the next steps are really about um, you know, checking if you're eligible, making sure that you actually meet the criteria and giving yourself the opportunity to know what your pathway is um, and then you've got the knowledge and then you can make some decisions. So as I said, 30 minutes, it's really tight, but at the end of it, you'll be able to go, gosh, I can do this or mm, it's not for me. Hopefully it's, gosh, I can do this. So um, look, very, very briefly, what's the situation now? Um, well, we are in what we call um, red because uh, our uh, Omicron has been quite late in coming to New Zealand. So uh, at the moment, the cases are only around about 200 cases per day, but it's expected to rise. So unlike places like the UK and Denmark, which is actually, we're actually becoming a lot more free, uh, New Zealand is um, locking down. It's kind of like a semi-lockdown. And uh, whilst restaurants are open, you can probably see in the workplace behind us, no one's here, a lot of working from home. So we're just going to ride this out. But... Um, over and above that, the government have also announced a, um, a, a five-stage plan to open the borders. And I'll, I'll move over to Hamnit now because she can uh, describe the most important phases of that and the dates related to that, which will impact you as an offshore um, you know, uh, potential migrant. Hamnit. Thank you, Scott. Um, yes, like as Scott said, we have had a lot of uh, migrants too come here in New Zealand, settle down here, and we are associated with a lot of uh, employers in New Zealand who we help them personally to get the migrants here in New Zealand as well. So with the five stages, which New Zealand government has announced on 3rd of Feb, which is, gives us a hope that we might be reconnecting with the world very soon. Um, the first two stages are mainly towards the New Zealand residents and permanent residents, citizens who are stuck offshore around the world and in Australia, which is divided into two stages from 27th Feb and 12th March that they will start coming in. Um, from 13th of April, uh, temporary visa holders uh, who have got valid visas, who got stuck offshore and couldn't enter New Zealand will be able to enter. And 5,000 international students uh, will also will be able to enter by the approval of Ministry of Education and Immigration. Uh, with five international students, I was just reading an article that this number may jump, depending on how the borders opening might go up. <laughs> so we are hoping that the border is going to open soon uh, during that time for the world. And following that, uh, there was this new employer accredited work visa holders can also enter New Zealand. So that means uh, securing a job with an accredited employer here in New Zealand becomes essentially important for to come to New Zealand on a valid work visa. Uh, I could have, I can explain the process where you can enter here and have a pathway till July, but that I think we are coming in our time frame, which is quite tight, but there is obviously a possibility to sort the residents post July because there are a lot of changes happening and a lot of residence programs being introduced post July. Uh, so I think the more essential part here is um, to secure a job where we can help and is, you know, uh, help and sort the recruitment part of it and get connected with the employer with the specific roles uh, related to infrastructure. Um, and also just so that, you know, there are more than 108 infrastructure government projects that are currently going on in New Zealand. And there are a lot of recruitments happening from overseas and I've done a lot of border exemptions and visas uh, from the employer side to bring in migrants here in New Zealand on certain visas. Uh, there are roles such as uh, quantity surveyors, civil engineers, uh, pro project managers, uh, civil engineers, everyone where you can meet the instructions, meet the requirements for the role, and we can sort the visa in. So that's in a nutshell how 
the job opportunity, the visa process would go. And obviously, we have to meet the other part of the requirements, which is health and character, which is equally essential for the visas uh, approval for New Zealand. Uh, other than, yeah, sorry. sorry. No, I was just going to say, the, I'll jump in if I can, Hamnik. So yeah. July to me sounds like the most important date that our um, yeah. viewers should be thinking about. So July is the, is the date when government has announced that um, the borders will be open for accredited employers who are wishing to hire people from yeah. offshore. People um, from offshore. Yeah. yeah. And is there any uh, restrictions on that in terms of wages or skill sets or anything like that? Uh, as such, the wages are still the median wage rate, uh, mm -hmm. which might uh, increase, um, which probably we'll know over the period of time. Mm. But I think as of now, it's the $27 wage rate. Mm. And um, we don't have the set date as of yet, but the government has given July as a month that they're going to open to the accredited employer work visa holders to enter New Zealand with their family, yeah. with okay. their immediate family. Yeah, Yeah. sure. Okay. So um, so, that, so, so the, the government hasn't actually given a specific time in July, but um, you know, the, I guess the big good news is that as of July, um, so long as your employer is accredited, then applications for visas can start to be processed. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, um, you know, obviously we'd like to talk a little bit more about this, Hamnit, but, um, you know, what is the state of the market, Hilary? I mean, you're in construction every day. Uh, we've got a whole lot of people here in the construction industry and the engineering industry. You know, what are their job prospects like? Sure. Um, I just thought I'd talk about, um, before we talk about some of our clients, just a little bit about what's happening in the market and what and what we know is going on. And Hamnet touched on um, some of this. Um, so we've just got a couple of slides there um, in terms of, and some of you might have been on our last infrastructure webinar, we touched some of this, but it's really important for you guys to understand, I guess, the scale of what's happening here. Um, and so what we know is that the government um, is investing billions into our infrastructure across the country, um, and that's mainly due to the New Zealand population growth. So we've got just over 5 million people um, that have live in the country, and we've had half a million people added to the population over the last six years. So um, growth at this rate means that we'd need 40,000 new workers per year, so it's massive. Um, we also know that there are hundreds of government approved projects planned from now until 2032. Um, and the main areas which you guys are likely already across um, is roading. So that includes huge new highways and busways. So out on the roads now, there's a lot of clearing going on. There's a lot of planning going on in this area. Um, so civil construction continues to be on the rise. We've got rail, um, which is massive. So ongoing maintenance and new rail planned across the country. Um, we've got one of our biggest rail projects on at the moment in Auckland here. So we're which is a massive um, underground tunnel. So that's really exciting. I think it's around 42 metres um, below Auckland City. Um, we've also got our water services. So that includes our waste management um, projects and that's new and upgrades to our treatment plants. And then we've got a whole lot of new and redevelopments of um, things like our hospitals, our universities, our schools, uh, recreational facilities, and also community housing. Um, so these are just some of the massive projects that are going underway. We've also got our two main airports. So Auckland and Wellington also have huge upgrades planned. Um, and I've been talking to our clients recently. A lot of them are part of these key builds. They've got the contracts for them. Um, some of them are at the very early stages um, where they've won the tenders. They then need to go to design. So we need design engineers. Um, right through to when things are built for the site managers, um, QSs, etc. So um, there's a long list of roles there that, that are needed. Um, so we know um, also as above with those roles that there's a super high demand for infrastructure and trades professionals like yourself. Um, we need them to resource these projects. Um, so these projects are obviously residential and commercial. Um, and it requires an amazing amount of skill, um, and we just don't have those um, skills available in New Zealand. Uh, so we had a massive skill shortage before COVID, um, and now it's becoming problematic to resource um, some of these approved projects and also private projects that are planned. Um, we also have a growing um, 
a growing population here with less younger people joining the construction and infrastructure trades industries. Uh, we also have an ageing workforce, which adds to this. Um, so around 22% of our workforce are over 50, which is also coming into play now. Um, we also know that jobs in New Zealand across engineering, construction and trades are on um, the skill shortages list. So they're on the long term, the regional and also the construction and infrastructure shortage list. Um, so in engineering, um, just on the engineering side, the skills are in chronic short supply. So it's estimated we need around 15,000, so sorry, 1,500 new jobs each year to match our economic growth. Um, so this will be our fastest growing sector um, and it will be dominated by some of those key areas I spoke about before. So transport, water and subdivision projects will be the largest and in the main areas, um, which include Auckland, Waikato and the Bay of Plenty. And then on the construction and trade skill side, we're going to need nearly 5,000 new jobs a year um, that will need to be created. So construction is our fifth largest sector in New Zealand's economy, um, employing just over a quarter of a million people. Um, and if you have a little look at that graph that's on that slide, you'll see that labour shortages in construction, um, as it's highlighted, are the highest that they've ever been. So since um, 1975, so 46 years. Um, so I guess what this all means for you guys is that there's more jobs available. Um, we need the skills um, and it's, it's a great time to start the process now, as Scott said, because things are opening up um, and our clients, um, you know, we've been around in the market for a long time. We're talking to clients every day. Um, they're recruiting, they're interviewing people that have gone through our process. They're making job offers. Some are coming through on the border exemption process and some are waiting for when the borders ease, um, but there are job offers that have been offered to them. Well, so, for Hillary, I mean, if I can jump in there, it's great to see all the stats and all the projections. Yeah. And, you know, and I mean, this has been the landscape for a long, long time. But in reality, what is happening? You know, you're talking to employers on a daily basis. You know, what are they saying? What are they feeling? And, you know, what, what information can you give yeah. them? Yeah, so there's definitely, um, I guess, around all that, there's a lot of fear that some of these projects won't um, won't happen. Um, they don't, they can't resource them. Um, they are getting inundated with CVs of offshore candidates and they don't have time to manage them. Um, they don't know who you are, um, your, at your commitment at moving here um, and, and where you're kind of placed in the process of moving to New Zealand. Um, what we, why our clients deal with us is because um, we spend a lot of time with you finding out, um, I guess, your commitment of moving to New Zealand um, and what kind of role you want to be in. And then we, um, you know, take people like yourselves to market that have gone through that process with Paul, have gone through the eligibility process, and then we take them out to the job market. Um, so I guess with the with our clients that we're dealing with at the moment, there's there's just, I guess, a fear and worry that um, that we haven't had the skills come into New Zealand for such a long time. Our borders have been shut for ages. There's been, it's a lot of things have actually stopped, um, but there's a lot in the planning. So um, I guess that they're kind of saying to us, you know, we, we need more people. We want to start interviewing more people. Um, we want to get them through this process um, and get them out to New Zealand as soon as we can. Well, you make a, I mean, you really make a good point. You know, they're, they're getting inundated by CVs, but they're not looking at them. Paul, um, you know, this is the catch-22. It's very difficult, isn't it, for an employer in New Zealand to look at CVs from offshore when there's so much, well, there's, there's, there's so much administration to do before that person can actually arrive in New Zealand. It's just too hard, isn't it? So how do we get around this catch-22? It's, it's the big one. Oh, it's, it's the massive one. I mean, I've been typing away. There's lots of people here asking, I need a job, I need a job, I want a job. How do I get a job? What you don't do is just randomly fire off CVs because it doesn't work. Um, the success rate is extremely low. Somebody said it's less than 2% of people who do that. And I think COVID's made that even worse because we've got this cute COVID, just because New Zealand closed its borders didn't mean that people stopped wanting to move to New Zealand. In fact, the opposite happened. More and more people wanted to move to New Zealand um, because of everything that was going on in their own countries and they're seeing New Zealand as a, as a way of escaping. And this queue of people has been building for two years now. And as Hillary just said, the New Zealand government 
put the green light on. They've literally said our borders are opening. And so what's happening is employers are getting hammered with CVs from all over the world. And they don't know if these people are going to get here, when they're going to get here, how they're going to get here. What have they got to do so they can get here? They know that there's more changes to immigration policy coming down the line. And these are blocks. These are blocks for the employer. It doesn't matter how good your CV is or how motivated you are. If you can't remove the blocks for the employer, then you can't move forward. And this is that whole situation of I can't get a visa because I haven't got a job offer, but I can't get a job offer because I haven't got a visa. Because the response that you'll get from most employers is, sorry, you're overseas, we can't help you. Um, you look great, let us know when you get here, which doesn't help either. Or they actually just don't respond at all. And that's because they don't know how to get you to move forward. And there is one very... It doesn't mean they're not interested in you as a, as a, oh, with your no. skills and your experience. It's just that's, that, that's the issue, right, Paul? That's the issue. And, and firing off CVs is going to have even less success because the amount of people who are doing it. So if you think of that big queue... Where do you want to be? You don't want to be in that massive queue of hundreds of thousands of people who are all doing one thing, which is firing off CVs to these employers. You want to be outside that. <laughs> you want to do it differently. And that's where we step in. And we've got a whole employment support strategy, which is way too much to go into on, on this webinar. But our clients get access to that. And it's really important. You can't prove to an employer that you're fully prepared, ready to move and everything's going to be OK. But we can. And that's the difference, because if we can do that, we can interact with the employers with you and for you uh, and in, in multiple ways. And that's how you get around the catch 22. The catch 22 is you've got to stop doing what everyone else is doing and get ahead of them. And how you get ahead of them is by using people like us, because, as you know, Scott, working in wasn't set up 20 years ago or whenever it was to do visas. It was set up to help New Zealand employers find skilled people from overseas. That's why we've thrived during the pandemic where most visa agents, to be honest, have struggled because they've had no work to do because they don't provide employment support. We're busy working with employers all over the past two years. We haven't stopped, you know, even though the borders were closed. And now we're busy getting these employers accredited and we're doing all sorts of things. And how you get the job offer, how you get around the tap catch 22 is tap into that channel going forward, not the one with all the noise and all the confusion and everything else, because it's a lost course. You'll end up firing off CVs and giving up eventually. That's what most people do. I think that's explained. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think Hillary will back that up is that if she's talking to a big construction company and she's putting somebody um, and presenting them as a potential candidate that can work in that business, that employer will want to know that um, that candidate is committed and meets criteria and is eligible and all they need is a job offer and then they can um, apply for their work visa. Is that, is that correct, Hilary? Yeah, absolutely, Scott. And I think that's, um, that's one of the key things why um, the companies that we work with work with us, as I was saying before, because we've taken, I guess, um, this massive pipeline of great um, candidates and um, drilled them down to the people that they actually need. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I think that with the, you know, the number of clients that we've got that are looking for um, all sorts of different roles and disciplines within that infrastructure and trade space, um, there's an opportunity for, for all of you, but it's just about, you know, spending time and finding out what your uh, motivations are, who you're bringing into the country, are you coming with your family, can we help your partner find a job, and this is all those little bits that we help you with through that, through that process. Yeah. Yeah. And look, I, I will make the point, we're not guaranteeing that we're going to find jobs for everybody. What we, what we do is support you on your journey. Uh, we may be able to uh, find you a job directly, or we may be able to introduce you to another agency that is more specific to your, um, you know, your skill set. Um, and we'll give you a whole lot of tools to apply directly if you, if you need be. Um, but you wouldn't want to um, go it alone. You know, I think that's that's the message. So, Paul, once people get their job offer, then it's we start applying for the for the work visa, right? Yeah. So, basically, once the best way to think of the move is in in four stages. First of all, it's preparing for the move so that we can actually show employers that you're fully prepared and ready to move. Yeah. Then it's employment support to help you get the job offer. And then the next stage, once the job offer is secured, is to get the the work visa, which, as Hamnit was saying, is going to be an accredited 
uh, work visa for most people. That visa allows you to move quickly. Um, at the same time or shortly afterwards, we can lodge the permanent residence visa, which is the one that's based on points. And then we can help you make the move and settle and stay. So it, it's very easy to understand. Get ready, get a job, get a visa, get on a plane. It's very easy to understand. But every one of those steps has barriers and hurdles to get through. And by breaking this move down into steps is how you move forward. There's lots of people here commenting and saying, I've got my CV up on your site and I haven't had a response and I've done this and I've done that. Yeah, there's reasons for that. You know, we've just been through a pandemic, <laughs> as we've just said. Employers are not engaging in the usual way that they would usually engage. That that's now changing and moving forward. If you want to get forward, you've got to start directly interacting and doing things to make this happen. These, this just doesn't appear from thin air. Um, but if you're skilled, like everyone on here appears to be, then we can help you. We just need to talk to you first and, and clarify the best way forward. Yeah. And so that is um, what you're recommending is the free eligibility assessment as a starter? Yeah. Yeah. So basically um, how we do this is we run you through a system. So we, we get your details and we'll be putting a link out to you all. And uh, we look at your information. And if we think that you meet the criteria, in other words, if we think that we can help you and you meet immigration criteria, then you can schedule in a, a free 10 to 15 minute call with one of our advisors. It might be me or it might be one of our other uh, team. And we'll get some more information. We'll give you some clarity. We'll answer a few questions for you. And if that all looks good, we go to another step. And that step is having a full visa um, assessment from our visa team. Our recruitment team can look at your details. They'll email you a report and then you get a full sort of 45 minute to an hour long consultation where we will actually map out your roadmap to New Zealand. The steps, the hurdles, the barriers, how to get a job, everything. That's what you need to move forward forward you're not necessarily don't fire off cvs don't just do that get get clarity first get the answers to the questions first and it's only when you've got those answers that you can actually move forward with peace of mind and because if you just rely on the internet all you're going to do is go round and round in circles and we see it all the time so yeah free call we're happy to talk to people for 10 to 15 minutes for free via zoom um, to give you some of that clarity to help you move forward Okay, so can I just get you clear here? Um, complete the eligibility, the free eligibility assessment that mm -hmm. uh, we'll be sending out. Yeah. Uh, our licensed immigration advisors will view that and make a call on, you know, whether they think that you look as though you can move. Um, they'll invite you to a 15 minute call with you or Monique or any number of other consultants that we have. And then from there, you can take the full eligibility assessment which is um, a full report completed by one of Hamneet's team, yeah. followed by a one-hour consultation, which is really grunty. Now, there's a cost for that, Paul, isn't there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're always up front with fees. Um, the cost is £150 for the um, assessment call and report. So, yes, it's £150, but that's a relatively, well, it's a small amount compared to what you're going to be spending shifting you and your family to the other side of the world. But it's a really important amount because it puts you on track. It minimizes your risks. It shows you the way forward. And more importantly, it puts you in the position where you can make a decision. Do you move forward? Do you not move forward? Do you move forward and have us help you? Do you move forward on your own? That's all up to you. But you've got to get that information so that you can make those decisions. Because as I say, it's not so much about what we can do. We know what we can do. And we know we do it well. It's what it looks like if you don't use somebody like us or if you don't use us. What's that look like? That basically looks like the internet. That looks like you being in a queue with 500,000 people firing off CVs and going nowhere. That's, that's the reality. We've been doing this long enough to know that. We see it all the time. Look, look I think you made a point about cost. I mean, it, uh, migration is not cheap. And, uh, and, and I'm not just talking about using a, a professional outfit like ourselves, but flights and moving house and and i think uh, you know people should be aware that this is not something where you just jump on a plane and arrive on the other side of the world and there's no cost you do actually need to be financially prepared for this which is essentially one of the biggest moves you can make in your life yeah yeah uh, i always say to people for the for the price of a decent car you get a whole new life 
And, and that's one way of looking at it. And the good thing with cost and budget, you've got to understand it. It's really important, but it's most of the costing as well isn't all due in one go. It's due in steps as you move through the steps. So whilst these figures of, of you know, whatever it might be, and it depends on what service you need and what visa you're going to get, some of them might sound a little bit scary. You go, oh, wow, you know, that's thousands of pounds or whatever it might be. But it's like you said, Scott, it's what you get for that money. And also it's it's planning it and managing it and that's that's what the call is all about it's not a call to tell you that you're eligible for a visa because whilst that's great it doesn't help you move forward it's a call to show you how to move forward and give you all that information and that's what's really important thanks paul yeah look i'm mindful that we've um we've gotten to 30 minutes and people are probably wanting to get to their their evening meals um or you know sit down and, and watch some netflix so I think we need to start wrapping up. I mean, we'd love to talk more. I'd love to talk to Hillary more and I'd love to talk to Hamney more about the, the process. But Hamney, what are you recommending that people do now? And, 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 and really, not just in terms of the eligibility assessment, because obviously that's the kickstart, but yeah. can you be doing in the background to start preparing for a move to New Zealand? Uh, I would suggest like, there are a lot of clients that I'm currently dealing with offshore and I have been suggesting all my clients to start preparing now. If Start talking now. If you have just even a little thought, little seed that you have that you want to move to New Zealand, just talk and there will be a lot of other plans that we can progress and there are a lot of changes that we can help you out to move to New Zealand. It's just that the seed we need to sorrow and then it will bloom. So uh, just contact us. Uh, we will guide you. There are, we have a team of 14 immigration advisors, uh, full licensed and very experienced. Um, we are always up to date on the news and notifications, which comes from government and immigration. So you will have a hands-on information every now and then, which will be applicable to your individual situation. But uh, definitely discussing, talking, even for 15 minutes, it's free of cost. Uh, doesn't harm. Doesn't harm. And, and Hilary, you know, from an employment perspective, what should people be doing? Yeah, and I think the same message really is for people to get started. Um, as Scott said, the um, borders are easing um, July. So what, that we're already February. So we're, we're not far away from, um, from that happening. And there is a process that goes um, before that. And so I hope you guys are, um, have learned some stuff today about getting the process started. And then hopefully um, you'll come through after you've been through the process with Paul to um, our recruitment team and we'll meet with you and um, spend some time getting to know you and getting you out to market. And Paul, if you, uh, I can see you typing away, typing away, typing away. Can I interrupt you? Uh, well, <laughs> you give anybody any last words to, to everybody who's out there who's listening today? There's hundreds yeah. of uh, yeah and and look I've just been yeah inundated with questions and everyone's very focused on the job how do you help me get a job how do you help me get a job how do you help me get a job how we help you get a job is explained when we do these calls with you we have to do it one-to-one -one. webinars are great for sharing information but if you really want to move forward you're not going to get the answers on the you know a quick message that i've just typed you <laughs> more than happy to talk to everyone one simple thing to do the link's there uh, we'll be sending it out to everyone as well. Click that link. We'll have a look at your details. Let's get the free appraisal underway. Let's have a look at that. Let's have a free call. Let's see where we go from there. It's that simple. Thank you. Look, and my message to all of you, and, and the fact that you're on this webinar is probably testament to the fact that you're starting now. But I guess the bigger picture is because um, you know New Zealand's been closed for two years, the demand um, is phenomenal both from the employer side, but also from people around the world who want to migrate here. So we know that as soon as the Immigration New Zealand uh, visa processing office opens, that there's going to be a rush like we've never seen, an unprecedented rush of visa lodgements um, that we haven't seen in, in our entire history, really. And this is going to put pressure and this is going to create delays. So uh, if, the, if I have one message, it's get prepared and make sure that once you do have that job offer, we're ready to lodge that visa um, as soon as the borders open, or as soon as, the, you know, as, as you're ready, um, and making that as efficient as possible so there are no delays, because the delays can stretch for months. And you know, we hear a lot of you know, terrible stories of people selling their houses and all sorts, um, and you know, they're unable to migrate. So you really want to 
be in a position where you can make that process as short as possible because migration is long enough and it can get a bit weary. So, um, you know, being prepared is absolute key and starting now like Hamley, that very first step is, is, um, is all that we can recommend. And then it, the ball's in your court and hopefully this has been inspiring and hopefully you want to make that move and inquire and, 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 and come down to New Zealand and enjoy this lifestyle of 5 million people. So um, thank you very much for joining us. We're hoping to work with you in the future and hoping to see you down here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Okay, good night, good afternoon, good morning. See you, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.